Hi everyone, my name is Rodney Smith and I want to welcome you to Table Talk Back where we're going to take a look at your responses to the questions from the previous episode. And I know it's been a while since we've had this series so I really want to thank everyone who's returned for it and all the new people as well. There were so many fantastic responses and I'd love to be able to share all of them but of course I can only do a smattering of them and we'll get to those in just a moment. But don't forget, we have a special guest with us, Christian Kang who's preparing a video submission. So let's go take a look and see if he's ready. Hey everyone, it's Rodney Smith from Watch It Played. Today's guest is Christian Kang. <laughs> Thank you, Rodney. It's great to be here. Uh, hey, Rodney. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm super honored, actually, that I get to be your very first guest on your inaugural episode of the relaunch of a show you already had. Wait, so why don't we just start off actually by answering the question that you posed in your last video and that is if there was a game with like a beginner, medium and hard mode or a beginner, intermediate, advanced mode, uh, which is the option that I would choose and why? And the answer to that is the option that I'm most likely to choose, you know, over and over is... Uh... I don't know. <laughs> What do you mean I didn't? I did prepare for this. You don't think I would prepare for Rodney Smith? This is watch it play, dude. <laughs> now, Rodney, let me explain. The reason why I don't have an answer to your question is not because I don't actually know, but it's because I, I, it just changes every time. Sometimes I'll do beginner, sometimes I'll do intermediate, sometimes I'll do advanced, and it just really depends. <laughs> that was a good save, right? Hey, right, bring it in. <laughs> But I do agree with you that those terms, beginner, basic, advanced, hard, right, I think those terms do the game as well as the community a kind of a disservice when they, when they use those. I think there is a tendency for more experienced gamers to get a little bit defensive if they get their butt whooped by a hard mode on a co-op game. I think the, the bigger reason why they're getting upset is because um, of what those designations imply and the way that the board game community looks at a board gamer's progression through and into the hobby. Let me explain. So to everyone watching, I want you to think back. I want you to try to remember how it is that you joined this hobby and this vibrant community. Did you go into a game store? Did you watch a review online? Did your friend invite you to a board game night? I'm willing to bet that the common denominator in all of this is not just random self-discovery, but someone being a catalyst and introducing you and bringing you into the hobby, right? And when that friend or when that reviewer or whoever evangelized to you and, and, and told you the good news about the board gaming hobby, I'm, I'm willing to bet that most of us were introduced by some sort of a gateway game. I think that most of us kind of think of it as a linear progression, right? Like maybe I'll start with Seven Wonders and, and learn card drafting and from there move on to an area control game that uses card drafting like Blood Rage or Inish. And as I develop even more, I might move on to some Euro games, right? Now that's not to say that gateway games are bad games, not at all. They're just lighter. And the fact that I have to hedge my statement about gateway games at all and say that, oh, they're, they're, they're fine games even though they're very simple, I think that's very revealing about the way that we think about a board gamer's progression in the, in the community. I think there is this underlying um, understanding that somehow if you're, if you're a hardcore gamer, then you, then you play dry euros and you eat wooden cubes for breakfast. And that's something that I think at its best is, you know, just a minor insecurity, but at its worst, it can lead to a kind of elitism that's really toxic for the community. So I think this is something that as a community, I would like to see us come together and be a little bit more thoughtful about how we approach it. Anyways, those are some of my thoughts on this. Uh, thank you so much for having me on to talk about this, Rodney. And to everyone watching, thank you for watching and discussing. And if you want to check out some content that's a little bit different than your typical review or playthrough or even tutorial, sorry Rodney. Then go ahead and check out my channel at youtube.com slash takeyourchits, that's C-H-I-T-S. Make sure you spell that correctly. You do not want to misspell that. <laughs> All right, thanks again. See you. Don't just check out Christian's channel. Subscribe to that channel. You will not be disappointed. I don't review games, but I will gladly review Christian. <laughs> he makes lots of fantastic videos with great insights, really unique content, and well worth your time. If I had one criticism, he dabs a little too much. That will never happen again here, I promise. Christian, one of the things I really liked in your commentary was this idea of the evolution that we go through as gamers. Because when we come to the hobby new, 
we're, we're just a beginner in the general sense. We haven't played a lot of games. We don't know the lingo. We don't know who Eric Lang is. If someone was to say, do, do you want to play a drafting game? We might be inclined to go get a pencil. You know, it's all new to us. But then as we play more games and we get more entrenched in the hobby, we leave that stage of being a beginner in the hobby. And so I think that can create a little bit of a resistance when we sit down to play a specific game that says, hey, do you want to start at the beginner level? Because as players, in a general sense, we're not beginners anymore. Even though we might very much be and might <laughs> really want to be and should be uh, attempting the game at the beginner level because the game is new to us. Now, I'm personally an advocate for the idea that when we sit down to a new game, we're all beginners and that's okay. But I did get one comment that I'll have to admit made me question that thinking. This came from The Cult of Pop who says, I don't think not having played a game before makes you a beginner. If you're an experienced gamer, you have a good understanding of game mechanics and can develop strategies easily with new games. For example, an experienced Dominion player starting a new deck building game is not really a beginner. I think there's a lot of transferable skills between different board games and playing more helps you pick up games really quickly. Hmm. I can't really argue with that. You know, you're right. The more I play, a particular style of a game, then when I play other games that fit within that style, then I'm going to come to terms with the concepts and strategies probably a little quicker than somebody else who's just brand new to that style of game. So as much as I would like to advocate for the idea that we get past this stigma around the word beginner, I can't really argue that we do bring our past experiences with us into new games and that does give us an advantage and probably sometimes means we don't need to start at that beginner level to really dive in and play the game. Dan wrote in and he said, uh, I'll sometimes include the advanced rules and just not tell anyone. Take a game like Dice Forge. The basic cards weren't interesting enough for me and I was afraid they wouldn't be interesting enough for the other players at the table. So I threw in some of the advanced cards and chose not to tell anyone about them. On top of that, I hid part of the rule sheet that described the beginner setup underneath the insert so no one would find it. <laughs> I already read this comment and it cracks me up every time. Dan was so averse to playing with those beginner cards. He put the rules about them under the insert. Friends of Dan, <laughs> when you're playing with Dan, make sure mid game you just check under the insert to see what goodies he's hidden under there. <laughs> That's great. No, but Dan, I hear you. You're right. I've played games like that too sometimes where Without the advanced rules, it's like the game is just missing some of the spice, some of the pizzazz that's going to bring out, you know, the, the fun and the flavor in the game. Am I, am I talking about games now or food? I feel like I've suddenly transitioned to food metaphors. Anyway, the point still stands. Sometimes it's those advanced rules that bring out the real fun in the game for a group. Larry L. wrote in with this, the one frustration I have are games that I can't get to the table with my gaming group and so I then try to play them at conventions, but there are always new players and so we always end up playing the beginner game. I've only played the beginner setup for Galaxy Trucker, where I really want to play a bunch of the expansion materials instead. Well, Larry, you might just want to borrow Dan's trick and just <laughs> hide all the beginner materials under the insert, maybe? I hear that works. No, uh, Larry, I, I, I get what you're saying there as well. And as much as I'm an advocate, for, hey, don't be afraid of trying the beginner level. Sometimes when I skip over, it's for the exact same reason. Time, or a lack of time. Sometimes when a game's in front of me, I kind of know this might be my only chance to really play this because of time constraints. And so I'd like to have as full of an experience as I can. And so it feels like going to like the more advanced modes is the way that you'll get that experience. And Larry, you're not alone. Other people mentioned this as well, including Scott Alden, the, uh, the, the guy who created Board Game Geek, he wrote, a, a lot of times I will only play a game one time, and he knows that in advance. So I like to add in all the stuff that the rules tell me to skip in the first game. So there you go. So Scott's a little bit more of a dive headfirst into the game kind of person. Drop Dead Criminal wrote, I think part of this involves what elements of the game are changed by the difficulty level. Some might remove elements of the game, while others simply add more of a thing that already existed. I thought this was a really interesting distinction because, because it's true. Sometimes the difficulty levels are not new gameplay elements that are being added in or taken away. Sometimes it's just that whatever the challenge is 
it gets more challenging. If you have enemies, there's suddenly more of them or they're more difficult to defeat. And I actually think it's in situations like that where the terminology of levels like level one, two, three, four, five, or whatever, probably makes the most sense. Diana Davenport wrote, in our gaming group, there's usually someone who has played the game and is introducing it to the rest of us. In that scenario, we usually defer to that person to decide at what level they want to teach us the game. Diana, I think that's a very sensible approach. I mean, it's putting faith in the person who presumably has the most experience with the game to guide the rest of you in the right direction. Besides, I like anything that puts more authority in the hands of the person teaching the game, because that's usually me. Kirk Gardner wrote, I generally default to normal or standard difficulty. The theory is that by labeling it that way, the designer is saying that is the way the game is intended to be played, and the other versions, easier or harder, are in the designer's view, variants. I think your suggestion of changing beginner to level one while removing the stigma might be misleading as to the designer's intentions for how the game should be played. What's interesting about that, Kirk, is first of all, I think you're right. I, when I see the term standard or normal, I think, okay, this is kind of all things being equal, the intended mode of play for most people. But it does get tricky when we start talking about the designer's intentions, doesn't it? Because the designer might have, when they were designing the game, what we now call the hard level of that game might have been what they considered normal. That might have been the level of difficulty they intended, but then the publisher got in the mix, and the publisher said, well, we love this design. It's a little too challenging for our audience, so we'd like you to create a normal level uh, that's easier than what you're doing, and we'll call your normal, we'll call that hard, and now, now we'll have a normal level. And if you could throw in a beginner level below that, that would be, be wonderful, right? Uh, and then, of course, you have play testers and you have developers who come in. What I'm saying is, there's a lot of cooks who get in the kitchen between the designer and their intention and what ends up in front of us. So it sort of depends on, on whose intentions you're trying to get to when you sit down to play the game, I guess, because I don't think the difficulty level always tells the complete story about what those intentions were necessarily. Not to mention, particularly in co-ops, there's a lot of factors that interfere <laughs> with the intended difficulty. Like if everyone's playing really well, then whatever level we're on is going to seem easier. Where if you have a couple people who are just making bad decisions, then suddenly the easy level could seem quite a bit more difficult. I guess what I'm saying is it's, it's really hard to establish a baseline for what the difficulty really is once you factor in all those things. But all that said, I, I, I'm still with you. I think that when I see normal or standard, you kind of have to assume right, that that is the intended mode of play um, and that the other options are kind of there if you want to adjust the difficulty a little bit, if you're finding it too difficult or, or too easy. And, and you're right, probably by relabeling it level one, two, three, and four, you kind of interfere with the idea of like, well, which is the standard? What is the sort of intended mode of play? Tom Lond writes, even if it's a new game for our entire group, we tend to crank the difficulty as high as it will go. It's not so much a stigma against the lower difficulty levels, we just like having that extra challenge. Well, there you go. Well, I tend to take a more reserved approach. There are people like Tom and his group who wanna dive right into that challenge and that's the experience they're looking for. Sarah Bear writes, I enjoy the accessibility of games with a wide range of difficulties to play, but then I have multiple conditions and disabilities. Fibro brain fog can severely affect what difficulty of game I can play. Though the upside is I get a wider range of challenge out of my lighter games than most people do. Uh, Sarah writes more, and we'll get to that in just a moment, but I just wanted to stop there and commend you, Sarah, for, for putting a positive spin on what I'm sure is a challenging situation for you, not just in games, but in life in general. And I, I, love, I love seeing people who can find um, a silver lining in something that is otherwise, I'm sure, as I said, a, a challenge for you. She continues, I, for probably now obvious reasons, appreciate the effort that goes into providing these options, that increase in accessibility for me and others. I do wish there was a bit more discussion and awareness of gaming with disabilities or other things that may need accommodation, adaptation, or even more patience. But I'm doing my best to blog about it since I've been gifted with a variety of issues. Sarah, I wish I had a link to your blog. It was very uh, humble of you not to include it in your comment, but please do. <laughs> please put it in the comments to this video and I will, I will pin it to the top so people can find it. I'll add it to the description because I'd love to hear what you're writing and I really appreciate your point of view here because I think it introduces 
an important perspective. You know, sometimes when someone's saying like, oh, I'd rather play on the beginner level, they're not saying, I, I want to have an easy win or I don't want to be challenged. What they're saying is, I need the extra time. I need that lower difficulty level so I can absorb the rules of this game so that I can feel comfortable in this experience and so that I can have a good time playing this game with you. So I think, yeah, we have to be careful not to drag people who are saying, hey, I'd like to try the beginner level, but to be careful not to pull them into whatever level we want to be in. I think it's important to listen to everybody at the table. And, and, and it goes both ways, obviously. But I think Sarah has shared uh, an added perspective on why we might want to consider someone who wants to start at that easier, lower level, or however you want to frame it. Either way, Sarah and everybody else, everyone who contributed to the responses to this topic, Christian, of course, thank you so much for your video. It was hilarious. I loved it. I'm sure everyone else enjoyed it as well. And everyone who, whose comments didn't get mentioned here, they were still very much appreciated. And I would love to get more of those comments. If something that was said in here inspired a thought in your brain, put it in the comments below and let's continue this discussion. But until the next episode, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.